So the other question is while we're talking about Omega, Omega's public relations effort appear to be winning the science wars. Why, why is that? So if the science is well developed enough, as Joseph just mentioned, to talk about uh, larger management of the species, why is Omega's version of this winning those winning the publicity wars? I, I think it remains to be seen that, that they're winning. Perhaps you know, in the last decade, I would guess they have been winning, but I think there is this commitment by ASMFC to move forward, and they, at least for now, the public hearing document and uh, your little hand out there has the right options that we need. Uh, you know, Omega probably would have preferred that that 75% solution not be in the public hearing document uh, in favor of something else. There are other options that they do prefer. So I, you know, I, I don't think they're necessarily good. <coughs> it's all you speak up, point in the less in the next year, we're going to know. This next amendment to the management plan uh, will be voted on within the next year. So we'll have an answer. Thank you, Jack. Can I just? Yeah, please, Jack. Okay. Um, the commission voted 15 to 1 to have ecosystem based fishery management for this fishery with the best science that was available at the time. So we have to hold them to it, but I don't think. I think that science has been, the switch to that is one. So I keep, we, what I think is amazing is we've gone in very few short years from having no coastwide limit at all to now having committed to managing it based on ecosystem science. And it's not a question of weather, it's just a question of one. Quick point. 10 years ago, when ASMFC made the decision to move toward ecosystem management, Omega protein supported that motion. So I don't, I don't want you to think that they're absolutely opposed to ecosystem management. It, the opposition occurs when you get down into the nitty gritty. You know, is it 75%? Is it different? No. Hey, Stick, are you with us? Yeah. It seems to me that it's got to be something since, since the 20% into place and then they're uh, next year. Take more fish, but it's kind of these pressures that we're just putting on to uh, try to delay this. And uh, I think it's going to take the uh, voices of a lot of fishermen, but like we saw in 2012, when 300 turned out the here and thousands wrote, uh, wrote in, that they've got to go ahead and, 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 and uh, put ecosystem management in place. How did that come across to y'all? <laughs> I couldn't make out a word he said. Sorry, Dick. Um, Dick, I'm going to try to ask you one more question. We'll see. We'll see if you come through a little more clearly on this one. So this is um, well. Many of us have been fighting this issue for decades and have grown weary and thrown in the towel. What advice can you give for all of us to keep up the fight? Well, yeah, you know, I, I think can you hear me now? We're going to find out. <laughs> We've just got to hang in there. I mean, you know, I was inspiring to be at the mid hearing in 2012. There was so, it was a packed group and pressure was on. And, and uh, I think the, the word was up that, you know, fishermen and concerned enough that want to change the situation. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, and, you know, I know that. Uh, but the striper fights back in the 80s that it was it was a matter of people recruiting as many allies as I could find and we could in different states to jump the same how we did. And that there are a lot more of conservation groups out there. I mean that that of course CBF is another other so uh um, you know, there's more. Excuse there's more me, Dick. Go, go, go back to CBF. I think uh, there's interest in the audience. You can go back to CBF. Oh, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's a lot more natural coalition between conservation still exists. Uh, and, and there are, you know, 
Natural Resources Defense Council, other groups that uh, could be enlisted for this fight. So um, anyway, I, I'm optimistic that with enough pressure that things uh, things can move. Thanks, Dick. Uh, Chris, what methods have been used to get the message out about this issue to the general public? Um, what would be most effective? Um, that question for me? It's for Joseph, but do you okay. let Joseph answer and then you can weigh in then. Um, well, there's a coalition of groups, as I mentioned, from Maine to Florida, and so you have a you have a set of things to reach out to the public that are electronic communications, websites, blogs, uh, action alerts, emails. Uh, there are hearing, there are groups that meet, and many of our groups are going to different fishery club meetings and speaking, talking to people, organizing. I think sometimes those human interactions are undervalued. Uh, understanding each other, hearing, and being able to answer questions. Uh, there's certainly media, so there have been a number of stories that have been written. Uh, I think you know, Tim Wheeler, Dave Mayfield, others have written in, in this area about the name. Um, New York Times, Wall Street Journal wrote an article about it. So I think that's trying to reach out to new audiences. Um, and I think there are a lot of people who care about particular species or areas. So the Bay Foundation, obviously, about the Bay, but there are the Audubon groups. There are the striped bass, like the stripers forever. Uh, there are groups that care about individual species, all of whom, once you talk to them, care. So I think there are a number of different ways that we've, we've got to get the word out, and we're really we're trying to do them all. Dick, do you have some thoughts? Dick, do you have some thoughts? Uh, I, I would say that uh, what's vital is, is publicity. And uh, you know, I, I noticed the New York Times had an op-ed and uh, that the Wall Street Journal was a uh, piece, so you know, the more TV would be great. Get to love what in. Jack, what, what influenced your decisions? So did media, what, what did you see that had an impact that you were managing to produce? People showing up. People showing up to public hearings had a major impact. I, I can remember in 2012 when they cut the quota by 20%, I was sitting at the table representing Virginia. I was the guy who was voting against that 20% reduction and there were, I don't know how many people in that room, but they all had orange signs that they held up speaking in favor of men. I still have nightmares at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, you know, when you, when you a face to it. That means a lot. And when you get individual letters written from citizens, that means a lot. But to me, much more so than than like a, a, a formula. You know, when you can put it in your own words and how it's going to impact you and how you feel about it, that that means a lot. I'll forgive you all for not mentioning the power of editorials. Jack, <laughs> uh, how do you determine the 100% levels from which to set 75%? This is for both Jack and Joseph. Um, well, Jack, I think you can have a periodic stock, benchmark stock assessment where they look at data. Um, and that from every state, and so just to give you a sense, there's the reported data from the Omega operation, but there's also pound nets where they're stuck in the water in the same place. So you have a long time series to have a sense of trends and abundance in species, um, and you have that information up and down the coast. In this last one, they actually found the largest tagging survey in the history of the country was on Menhaden in the 70s. Uh, they tagged them and watched where they were. So they have all different sources of data, and based on that and historic numbers, and an estimate, which um, many feel like is too low, but it was in the last stock assessment, and we all agree it's the best available science, and uh, it has an estimate of what that original population of Manhattan was. Uh, it's the, what they call virgin biomass, and that is, 75% of that is what we should do. Yes. Okay. Jack, I'm going to ask you a question that I do not understand. I'm going to assume you do. Issue number nine of the public information document highlights a series of opportunities for research programs and priorities 
for better management of Atlantic Menhaden. What would you recommend the ASMFC take on as a research priority to drive better management of Menhaden? That's a tough one because I'm not, I'm a fishery manager, not a fishery scientist. Uh, but to me, anything that gets any kind of research that refines the 75% option and tells us exactly what that number should be, and maybe it is 75%, maybe it's 72, I, I think, I think that helps tremendously, and anything that can further describe this ecosystem that we're trying to manage um, is important. But can I go, I just want to go back to the last question just real quick about what influences people. <coughs> Remember, every fishery manager around the table at ASMFC has a boss. It's the governor. Get to the governors. You know, that's a lot of times those commissioners sitting around the table before they even walk into the meeting have been told how they're going to 